Okay, <laughs> you wanna come help me, Marble? You wanna come help me film? Yes, you do, <laughs> what a good boy. Today's a little bit of a different video, so I thought let's be in a little bit of a different area. You're here in my natural habitat with me in Northern California, so welcome to the Redwoods. <laughs> Today's video is going to be what people are calling the mid-year freakout slash book tag. Um, I don't think it's much of a freakout for me, but that's fun that that's the name. So we're going to look at the books that I've read today and rank them um, and share like what were the best books and what were the worst books and what are books I was surprised by. Um, and again, because usually I focus my videos on young adult books or middle grade books, this is a little bit different because I'm going to be including um, from all of the books that I've read this year. Um, nonfiction, adult fiction, adult nonfiction, YA, middle grade, it's the whole thing. So these are the best ones and the worst ones so far. Okay, I've got all my books on a pink picnic blanket <laughs> outside here and let's just get into it. I've read 18 books this year, 11 of them have been fiction, 7 have been nonfiction, and 7 also have been YA or middle grade. So those are kind of, it's kind of the breakdown that we're working with today. Okay, there are 13 questions, 13 prompts about books for the 2024 mid-year book freakout tag. Let's get into it. The best book so far, hands down, has been Demon Copperhead for me by Barbara King Solver. Let's look. I've got all my books here. So good. Demon Copperhead by Barbara King Solver is the best book for me so far from 2024. Um, this I read the first week of 2024. I think I got it for Christmas in 2023. And this is um, about a boy, young, young man, <laughs> um, who grows up in the Appalachian region and he's plagued by addiction, by poverty, um, by family cycles that he can't break or he's trying to break but it's really hard to. Um, plagued by things that are just teenager related items. This is not a young adult book, but this is um, actually does follow a teenage protagonist for the most part, um, which is unusual because usually adult books follow adult protagonists and young adult, book, young adult books follow young adult protagonists. Um, but this one kind of breaks the norms and it's so good. Um, I'll get to it in a second, but I was like, it evoked this emotion from me that not a lot of books do and it was it was hard to read it was like it was a hard um story uh based off those things that i just said addiction poverty um just like obstacle after obstacle for this character uh named demon copperhead or called that and um yeah it's just this fantastic story of his life um the people whose lives he's kind of interacting with um definitely uh, plot driven I would say but also strong strong characterization throughout um, for all major and minor characters. I also personally love Bar Barbara King Solver and I also love books about the Appalachian region. I've never been there myself but like my kin are from there um, you could say so I don't know there's something about it um, that just calls to me so uh, I have this like Appalachian section of on my bookshelf that uh, that I like to read. Um, this one is going there instead of being categorized in my Barbara King Solver section, which is a different section on the bookshelf, but so good. Um, Demon Copperhead, Barbara King Solver. Winner of the Pulitzer Prize. She doesn't mess around. She does not mess around. Next up, best sequel. This category totally changes gears from Demon Copperhead. Uh, the best sequel that I've read so far goes to the Summer I Turned Pretty series, <laughs> which is a YA series. I did a video on the first book of this last week, so check that out if you haven't already. But I just finished book two of this series called the It's Not Summer Without You. So the first one is um, The Summer I Turned Pretty. The second book is It's Not Summer Without You. Let's see, where is it? This is book one. Um, I listened to both of these on Spotify. If you have Spotify premium, premium, they're included. And Spotify also is popping off on all the audiobooks lately. So check that out. I'm a big Libby fan uh, for audiobooks. I don't really, and library fan in general. I don't often buy books. I have a lot of physical copies of books right here, um, but I do not often buy books. Uh, so Libby is awesome. And since I'm already paying for Spotify music, I'm gonna jump on that Spotify audiobook section. <laughs> so, Summer I Turned Pretty, so good. Um, I really like how the second book in this series continued the tension um, that the main character, whose name is Belly, feels. Um, it's a lot of like teenage tension, but it's a lot of tension that has 
that comes from um, grief, that comes from friendships kind of being um, torn uh, or just stretched a little bit. Um, and yeah, I'm for sure going to read the, the third book, obviously. Uh, I'll probably finish that next week, so <laughs> um, stay tuned or comment if you want to me to do a more in-depth video on that, but that is the best sequel so far. The next question for this mid-year book out, book freak out uh, tag is a new release that I haven't read. Okay, so what's a new release I haven't read but want to? And this award goes to Coyote Lost and Found. This is a middle grades novel by Dan Gemeinhart. It was super fun. I got to meet Dan um, virtually. He was supposed to come to our school, but he had some travel arrangement difficulties. I'll put a picture of him there with uh, the two of us meeting. Meeting. Um, anyway, it's his sequel to Coyote, The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise, which I taught to my seventh grade students when we were meeting Dan. And just that book, the, the first one, The Remarkable Journey of Coyote Sunrise, is so good. There's so many teachable moments. There are so many teachable extension activities that you can do with that novel. Um, and so the sequel, it's kind of like a semi-sequel, like, I don't know, just book two, I guess. I don't know. He, I feel like, is kind of hesitant to call it a sequel himself, so so am I. <laughs> but that is definitely one I want to read. It came out in February, so... What am I doing? I need to get on it. This next question is, what is the most anticipated release of 2024, I guess, that I haven't read yet? And that one, I don't, <laughs> I'm pretty bad about knowing what books are coming out when or like being on top of all of that. But I was, I don't know, I don't know where I saw this, but I saw that <clears throat> there's a graphic novel coming out called Age 16. And it's by, it almost feels wrong to be having this technology outside, but okay, let's look. Rosanna Fung. Item will be available July 2nd, so very soon. Um, so super excited about that. It's about different generations of women in the same family. It's almost the reviews or the synopsis are kind of giving me um, Joy Luck Club vibes by Amy Tan, which I read years ago, and maybe I should read and pair that with this one. I'm already anticipating that that will be a really cool <laughs> matchup, um, but it's kind of about like how each generation um, pushes boundaries and defies odds and creates their own identity. So that seems really good, and I can't wait. Age 16, Rosanna Fung, July 2nd, let's go. Okay, next book, Biggest Disappointment. My Biggest Disappointment book uh, was an audiobook I listened to called Local is Our Future, or Our Future is Local, something like that. And I was, I am so um, convinced that by going local, it'll solve a lot of problems, eating local, voting local, um, having a local community, like engaging with your like local government and activities and civic center and like all of the things. And so I was really excited to hear just kind of like an echo chamber of that within this book. But this book was more about like, how global is the problem, like a global economy and that kind of thing, which was good to know and it gave me some language that I didn't have before. Um, I guess even phrases like global economy and, and like on one hand that seems good. Oh my little dog is bringing his toy outside. He's such a cutie pie. Hold on, I gotta film this. Well, we'll wait and see if he brings it up here. Good doggy, get your toy. Anyway, Local is our future, biggest disappointment. Um, they have a podcast, which probably would have been the way to go, um, so I could select the categories I'm, that I was interested in. Um, but yeah, uh, I was just hoping for like more affirming solutions instead of like depressing problems, and I feel like that that's what that book was about. What was my, what was my biggest surprise? Am I in focus? Oh God, please tell me I've been in focus this whole time. Biggest surprise book? I guess, like, delightful surprise. <laughs> I would probably say The Summer I Turned Pretty, Jenny Han. She is like, yeah, she's rocking it. Tied, perhaps, with, um, with A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. I read those books, I think, simultaneously, because I was listening to one and reading the other. And that was just a fun, those were both fun YA books that kind of got me out of a reading funk. And um, yeah, I did, again, I did a video about them. Go check it out. Oh, going back to the biggest disappointment, this is sad, and I hate to say this, and you can come for me if you want to, but Heartstopper 5 was, I was disappointed by this book. I loved how in Heartstopper 1 through 4, there were really quality friendships, really quality, like, 
examples of how to talk to your parents about hard things, how to talk to your friends about challenging situations, how to talk to your romantic partner about like goals that you have for your relationship. And probably because the boys are a little bit older in Heartstopper 5, um, it just got a little too mature for me to be able to include in my middle school library and feel comfortable about it. Um, so I was really disappointed by that. The other books that um, had like either drug reference use or drinking, or not really drug, but drinking reference or like sexual references were like basically fade to black. Um, but this one wasn't exactly that way. I don't, and honestly, I don't even remember what happens in this book all the way. I just remember being like, darn, I can't like include it. And so I think I figured that out early on. And so then the rest of the day that I was reading this book, I was just kind of like bummed out. <laughs> and is it still a great series? Yes, probably. I'm gonna have to read this again with like, <laughs> knowing that I can't be able to include it um, or like feel comfortable including it uh, but yeah that was really sad <laughs> that was really sad I'm really like, still bummed out well we're not gonna dwell on disappointments let's move on next question is who was my what is it <laughs> who was my new favorite author of the year so far uh, in the six months that I've been reading in 2024? And probably my new favorite author is Holly Jackson, who wrote the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series. And I have only read one of her books, that one, uh, but I was pleasantly surprised by the details um, that she included and that she continued throughout the story. Um, and I was pleasantly surprised to be surprised. Maybe she should have been my best surprise book or best surprise author, but um, definitely enjoyed Holly Jackson and will be reading more of her books. Newest fictional crush. <laughs> That's a fun one. And I feel like my answer, I don't know if it fits, but probably would it be Murderbot from the Murderbot Diaries, book one. Um, this is like a robot who's trained to kill on Mars or some, planet, I don't know, some planet that I didn't love the book, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, and I think that was a disappointment to my husband and friends who recommended it to me because they really love it and I read it because they love it. I couldn't get into it at first just, I guess, because of the way that the murder bot is so like literal and just like, I didn't understand like his role, I guess, but by the end of it, I was thinking, oh, he's so sweet. <laughs> Newest favorite character, Demon Copperhead, obviously, from the number one book, Demon Copperhead. Books that made me cry, books don't make me cry. I guess Demon Copperhead would be the closest one that I was like, wow, this is, oh, this is such a struggle to get through, but I have to. I felt like bruised by this book, I guess is a good way to say it. Um, three more questions. Books that made me happy. Also by Barbara King Solver, the book that made me my happiest was Animal Vegetable Miracle. This is a nonfiction story book <laughs> about her family's journey to local food and local um, community building in the Appalachian region uh, where her partner's family is from, or her family? Uh, she has family connections back. I think it's her partner's uh, family property that they end up moving back to, but no, 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 she, she grew up in Kentucky as well. So they're kind of a homecoming of sorts. And she and her two daughters and her husband um, try to grow, source, everything local, everything for a year. So that means like not eating foods during a certain season. And so they talk about um, the joys of that, like the, obviously the challenges, but the joys of just like the freshest food possible and um, how like it, ultimately saves money and gives you better like nutrients and health and draws you closer to community. Um, it's basically, this is what I was looking for with the biggest disappointment book, Local is Our Future. Um, so most beautiful book. Oh, I don't have a copy of this one, but I think the most beautiful book I read would be uh, Ain't Burned All the Bright. This is by Jason Reynolds and somebody else, Jason Griffin. So super fun, Jason and Jason. This one is so good. I think it uh, comes from their experience during the year 2020. I think it's mostly art, um, but I think it's basically like three really long sentences uh, from Jason Reynolds, but the book is thick. It's like a, 
yeah, and it's heavy too because they use glossy paper because they're artists and they know what they want. So beautiful visually, beautiful, um, like lots to think about. And I just remember, um, I mean, you can read it really quickly, but it's the kind of book that you want to go slow with. So Marble agrees. He's growling in the forest if you can hear that. Last question is probably the biggest question, so I'm just gonna rapid fire this. TBR books for the rest of the year. What books do I wanna still read? Anxious Generation, I cannot freaking wait to read more of this. I've already read the intro and it's like blowing my mind. Why are we all anxious? I don't know, read this. I mean, I do know, but that's affirming it. Another book, Change Here Now, Permaculture Solutions for Personal and Community Transformation. Oh, I cannot wait. I'm gonna pair this with the Seed Folks, um, which is a really young book, but We'll get into that later. I'm really curious to see how place and community and like stacking functions brings us all together. All right, here's the rapid fire. A journal book called A Voice of Her Own. It looks very dated, but apparently it's good. Another writing book called Make a Scene, Crafting a Powerful Story, One Scene at a Time. This is kind of how I'm writing the story that I'm working on right now, so I'll read that. Like I said, I've read 18 books so far this year. This is probably the least amount of the least amount of books, <laughs> this is probably the least amount of books that I've read in a year recently, um, which is ironic because I've had a little bit more time this year and a little more headspace, but that's allowed me to write. And I guess I'll take writing more over reading more any day. I already mentioned um, the young adult books and middle grade reads. My students picked these out for me to read over the summer, so I'm getting into those. Um, the Secret Art of Flying, The Wild Robot, Wonder, Midnight Children, and I'm currently reading The Explorer Academy or something like that uh, right now. So we're doing that. Oh, and Warriors, book one. Um, also on my list, uh, Wendelin Van Dran, the lady who wrote Sammy Keys, um, is coming to our school this fall. So these are books I like grew up on and I can't wait to meet her in person. I'm totally like gonna freak out a little bit, I think. Um, but that's that. And then lastly, I'm just gonna show you the pile. <laughs> Books make you stronger in more ways than one. Oof. This is the pile of Redwood related books that I'm planning on reading today, <laughs> this year. I wish I could read these all today. Some of these are fiction, some of these are nonfiction, some of these are adult, some of these are for middle grade or YA um, readers, and I just, I live in the Redwoods. I think it's really cool to read books set where you live, um, or books that have been written by local authors, usually those are kind of like the same. Um, but yeah, uh, one of those is Operation Redwood. Oh, this one's not exactly like specific to the area, but I p could not pass this up. It's called Rooted and A Life at the Crossroads of Science, Nature, and Spirit. That was like my jam. So <laughs> I've got a big pile of that and I can't wait to read those. And um, I've been like scheduling reading time in every day this summer break. It's been amazing. It's been wonderful. What books have you been reading that you've been really excited about or disappointed by or surprised by? Let me know and comment down below. And um, I gotta go, I gotta go read. So I'll see you later.